In this video, I'm revealing the exact resume I use to land interviews and receive offers from top tech companies like Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. The resume I will share with you has allowed me to go from a no-name startup making $5 an hour to six figures at Fang in under two years as a self-taught programmer. I've learned that writing a good resume is not difficult, but you do need to incorporate the right strategy. That's why I'm going to share five tips on how to write an effective software engineering resume using my own as an example. I promise that if you implement these tips, you will get more interviews. So without further ado, let's get into tip number one, which is to not be modest. Now, most people will tell you that they love modesty. And yes, modesty is a desirable trait to have, but not when it comes to resumes. The job marketplace is already competitive enough as it is, and a modest resume will do you no favors in standing out among the thousands of others flooding your recruiter's inbox every day. The whole point of a resume is to make yourself stand out and highlight your achievements. The keyword here is your, not your coworkers' achievements or your boss's, yours. If there's ever a place to brag about your accomplishments, then a resume is the best place to do it. So how exactly do you brag tastefully on a resume? Well, by following a proven format. It goes like this. I accomplished X by doing Y resulting in Z. An example would be, I enhanced the efficiency of our data retrieval system by implementing a streamlined algorithm that reduced processing time by 30%, resulting in a more responsive and agile system. This format reliably communicates to a recruiter what you did, how you did it, and the end result. To spice this up a bit further, make sure to use an active voice instead of a passive one. Let's look at an example demonstrating a passive voice. Database performance optimization was carried out by the team, resulting in a 50% reduction in query response time. Sure, this explains what was done at the role, but at no point is your accomplishment highlighted in that sentence. No recruiter would be impressed by that. It just doesn't have that oomph, if you know what I mean. Contrast that with, I led a team in optimizing database performance, resulting in a 50% reduction in query response time. The active voice makes that sentence stand out so much more. Notice how instead of just describing what happened in that role, I go out of my way to say I. I led a team versus optimization was carried out by the team. When using an active voice, it also helps if you use power words. There are so many power words you can use, so I linked a list of words in the description below. In any case, another thing you may have noticed in the examples was that I use percentages. And that leads me to my second tip, which is to quantify your accomplishments. On top of using an active voice and following a proper format, the way to make your accomplishments stand out the most to any recruiter is to quantify them. Quantifying an accomplishment is the easiest way to show a recruiter how much of an impact you made in that role. If you can attach a percentage or some measurable number to your accomplishment, then the recruiter can see how much of an impact you made. Using my resume as an example, I have listed on one of my bullet points, built to maintain the Best Buy Mexico retail app that is used by tens of thousands daily and to date has generated several million in revenue. By including the revenue and amount of users, the recruiter has a better idea of the scale of the project I worked on. So make sure to always find something measurable in your past roles as it adds more credibility to your work. Keep in mind that you don't have to do this for every bullet point on your resume, only your most important accomplishments. All right, next we have tip number three, which is to include your LinkedIn and GitHub profiles. Every software engineer should have both a LinkedIn and a GitHub account as these sites act as extensions of your resume. They both offer additional insight into other accolades like certifications, recommendations, or the type of side projects you worked on. It's no secret that most recruiters spend roughly six or seven seconds looking at your resume. So adding your LinkedIn or GitHub invites recruiters to spend more time looking into you. The more time a recruiter spends looking into you, the more likely they are to consider you for the current role. This is why I always include both at the top of my resume. Speaking of my resume, it's time to take a look at how I formatted my resume. Now, quick disclaimer, there's no perfect resume template out there, but I do believe there are general guidelines you can follow to increase the recruiter response rate. That leads me to tip number four, which is to always put your skills and experience over your education. This ties into the last point a bit when I mentioned recruiters only spending six or seven seconds scanning your resume. And those few precious seconds, the recruiter needs to get a sense of your skills and abilities. And the best way to do that is to have your skills and experience at the forefront. 
If we look at my resume, we can see how the first most prominent section is my job experience, because that's the first thing any recruiter is going to see. Alternatively, you can also start your resume by putting your skills section at the top, but this is just how I did it. The reason for this is employers will always care more about what you can bring to the table in terms of your experience than your education. That's not to say education isn't important, it just has the least priority for any employer. So when writing your resume, always put your education at the bottom, even if you're a new grad. Now for the most important tip of the video, tip number five, which is to tailor your resume for each job you apply to. Most people think that once they've perfected their resume, that that's the only one they need. But when you think about it, that doesn't make any sense. Every job posting is different, so why would one resume be a fit for every job? When applying to a job, make sure to read the entire listing and highlight any technical and soft skills the job is looking for. Make note of skills that appear more than once. You can also leverage online tools like JobScan to help you out with this. Once you've found the top skills for the job, then you can rework your bio, bullet points, or any skills to match the ones in the job posting. Only do this if you have experience in those things. Don't go saying you have C++ experience when you actually don't. In my case, I have several variations of my resume that I've used in the past. Most are focused on iOS since that's my specialty, but over the years I've picked up new skills like React Native, AWS, and even backend development. So I would tailor my resume to include these skills if necessary. I can guarantee you that if you took the extra time to tailor your resume to the job you're applying for, you'll get more opportunities to interview. In any case, while resumes are important, their job is to get your foot in the door, nothing more. If you want to learn about how to land a high paying tech job, then I made a full guide on how to do just that. You can check that out right here. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.